Hi, I'm Jude from HeadFi.org. On this episode of HeadFi TV, we're going to take a look at an exciting new, very unique headphone from Blue, and it's called MoFi. I'm going to name a handful of companies, and I want you to think about what they have in common. Sennheiser, Sony, Biodynamic, Shure, Audio-Technica, AKG. What do these companies have in common? I'm sure all you head fires know that every one of them makes premium headphones. But another thing they all have in common is that they're also makers of high quality microphones. And these makers of both premium headphones and premium microphones constitute a pretty small, pretty exclusive club actually. There just aren't that many of them. Well, there's a Southern California company that's going to be joining this club right about now, I'm talking about Blue Microphones and their new MoFi, which were just moments from revealing publicly for the very first time. Last winter, Blue unveiled a MoFi teaser campaign leading up to CES. It was a campaign obviously designed to grab attention by being provocative. And it worked. For example, one of them said, move over headphones, MoFi is coming. Those provocative ads combined with Blue's reputation for quality in the mic world had me scheduling Blue as one of our very first stops at CES, so their campaign worked as intended on me anyway. Now before we get to showing you MoFi, I want to give you a little background information on Blue microphones in case you're not real familiar with them. Blue has been making high quality mics for nearly 20 years and became popular with mainstream consumers when they released their line of USB microphones which are now wildly popular with podcasters and home recording enthusiasts. Here are a couple of them. This one is called the Nessie because it kind of looks like the Loch Ness Monster popping out of the water. This is a very popular model and you may have seen it. This is a very cool multi-pattern USB mic called the Yeti. I love this mic. So these are just a couple of examples of a pretty extensive line of USB microphones from Blue that really put them on the map with mainstream consumers. Now you pro audio guys and gals are probably familiar with Blue's pro market mics which are very very desirable in the pro audio world. Their pro mics are their own designs and they're hand assembled by them in California. I actually visited Blue's headquarters last winter and watched some of their top of the line mics being built and it was very very impressive to see. Now here are a couple of examples of their pro mics right over here. This one is the Blueberry. It's a thousand dollar large diaphragm cardioid condenser. It's an excellent mic for vocals. And this one over here is the Kiwi. This may be Blue's most coveted model. It's just super versatile with nine different polar patterns. This Kiwi here, I love it. I think I might have to get one for myself someday. And uh, anyways, that's a wonderful mic too. That's 2000 bucks. Now both the Kiwi and the Blueberry use discrete class A circuitry. And Blue has many other pro mic models priced all the way up to 6000 bucks for their flagship bottle mic. Now with all of Blue's pro mics, the build quality, again, the attention to detail, absolutely insane. Now having looked at some of their microphones, it's obvious one of the things that Blue prides itself on, in addition to sonic performance, is powerful iconic styling. Even though their microphone models all look different from one another, there's no denying when you see any of them that you're looking at a Blue microphone. In designing their first headphone, Blue wanted to accomplish the same thing. Iconic Blue styling to go with strong performance. So without further ado, let's take a look at the new Blue MoFi, which is unlike any other headphone you've ever seen. Voila! That's Blue's MoFi, and obviously there's no other headphone on the market today that I'm aware of that looks anything like it. I mean, look at it. Now, I'm not sure how well its appearance translates on video for you, but the first time I saw MoFi in person, my jaw dropped, and I had the powerful, irresistible urge to touch it and pick it up, which I think I did without asking for permission to do. And anyways, when I did pick it up, my jaw hit the floor. Check this out. I mean, that is so cool. There's nothing else like it. The headband is obviously very unusual and very unique. It's a multi-link, multi-jointed assembly, and it was designed this way to do a lot more than just provide shock value visually, which it really does very well. If you notice, the multi-link design keeps the ear pads angled flat against your head, and this is helped along by the articulation of the ear cups. Now, because of this design, I find the headband applies force very evenly, making for a really comfortable fit over my ears and against my head. I don't feel any pressure hot spots from the ear pads or any sense that the force applied across the ear pads is anything but even if not perfectly even. A typical headphone headband, a non-MoFi headphone headband, is usually a flexible arch that flexes to fit varying widths of different heads, just flexes out wider. Now I want you to imagine for a second that my hands are ear cups on a headphone. When you widen the headphone it can change the angle of the ear pads and the force applied and as it gets narrower, it changes the other way. 
Now with MoFi again, the multi-link, multi-jointed headband keeps the ear pads at pretty much the same angle, no matter the width, from the narrowest width to the widest. The first time I handled MoFi's headband, its movement and feel reminded me a lot of well-damped suspensions of high-end remote-controlled cars. And actually, one of the earliest prototypes of the MoFi headband used what looked to me like a shock absorber from an RC car, and I'm pretty sure that's exactly what it was. Now, they've since gone to a different spring configuration for a number of reasons. Now, back when I first visited Blue last winter, they showed me the earliest design ideas, essentially the drawing board and the evolution of the headband's design over time. They put a tremendous amount of time and resources into this headband, and I really, really dig the result of their work in the final product. The MoFi is arriving a little later than originally planned, but I'm glad they took some extra time to get everything right. The MoFi ear pads are made of synthetic leather stuffed with a very thick memory foam. Very thick. I have two MoFi's here actually and the ear pads between both are very uniform, very consistent in terms of shape and thickness so that was nice to see. The ear pads are also very comfortable on my head and do a really nice job of accommodating all my different eyeglasses. And the top of the headband is also similarly padded. MoFi's jointed headband also makes for excellent neckability, and by neckability I'm referring to how comfortable it is when you're wearing it around your neck and it's not on your head. Now because the yoke joints allow the earpieces to be pulled down like this, MoFi is probably the most neckable large full-size headphone I've yet used. Now okay, if you've got trapezius muscles that go up to your jaw like a bodybuilder and then down to here straight, MoFi's headband might be tighter on your neck. For most necks, however, it should fit fine. In terms of build quality, MoFi seems to be closer to me to Blue's Pro products than their consumer ones. Not quite the Swiss watch finish of, say, their $2,000 Kiwi microphone, but the MoFi does have very solid build and tight tolerances, extensive use of aluminum for strength, a lot of metal. And of course, only time will prove how durable the MoFi is, but I'm expecting it to hold up very, very well. Now, in addition to its robust build, Blue also wanted the MoFi to feel solid. There's a lot of mechanical movement with the MoFi from its multi-link, multi-joint headband to its swiveling ear cups, but it all feels so well controlled, so well damped. Even around the ear cup swivels, they use these rubber boots to damp the movement of the cups. And there's just an awesome solidity to this build. I love the way the MoFi feels. It's so solid. As far as sound goes, MoFi is outstanding. It's priced at $349.99, and in my experience, it is very competitive at the price. And this part does bring me to something very unique about the MoFi's sound design. Something just as unique as its appearance. Something that substantially raises its value for the price even further, in my opinion. And that is that MoFi has a built-in amp. And what makes the MoFi's built-in amp different is that it's not like a typical active headphone, but actually a bona fide headphone amp shoved inside of the MoFi. Now to help make sure they did the amp right, Blue enlisted the help of engineers with extensive experience in the design and manufacturing of dedicated headphone amplifiers. Now actually, a lot of us head fires, myself included, are actually using amps made by the co-designers of the amplifier inside the Blue MoFi. Now, working together with Blue's engineers, they designed an internal amp ideally suited for MoFi's fiber-reinforced 50mm dynamic drivers. MoFi's amp is capable of outputting 240 milliwatts with very low distortion, and it has very low output impedance, around one-tenth of an ohm. Now, if it sounds at this point like I'm talking about an excellent dedicated headphone amplifier, it's because I am. It just happens to be inside the MoFi. Most active headphones use digital signal processing, or DSP, and other electronic trickery to do sound shaping, and most have puny amp stages. Most active headphones I've used that have a passive sound mode sound completely different when active than when passive. MoFi's internal amp is the real deal, though. It's designed to amplify MoFi transparently and with authority. No DSP, purely analog, no sound shaping just transparent amplification. So the MoFi retains its excellent tonal balance, which I'll get to in just a minute, whether it's being used passively or actively. Also, unlike most active headphones, most of which have noisy circuits, MoFi's amp is in terms of self-noise dead silent to my ears. Again, it's a bona fide dedicated headphone amp in here, and it's awesome. Simply put, the idea behind MoFi's built-in amp is to provide a high fidelity experience no matter the source. If all you've got on hand is a smartphone, then activate MoFi's built-in amp. However, when you've got an excellent headphone amp on hand already, use the MoFi in its passive mode. In its passive mode, by the way, MoFi's nominal impedance is rated at 42 ohms. Okay, I should probably mention this right now, by the way, but the MoFi's amp is powered by an internal battery that charges via USB and provides around 12 hours of typical use from a full charge. It takes about three to four hours to charge. 
Now, in terms of its sound signature and its tonal balance, I asked the MoFi team at Blue Microphones what their goal was. And they said they wanted MoFi to be musical. They wanted it to appeal to audio enthusiasts as well as the pro market audience that they'd been working with for nearly 20 years. In essence, they wanted the MoFi to be flat enough for professional use, but not clinical. I like the way they put that. I also think they did an awesome job meeting their goal here. They went with what I'd call a very safe tuning, and I mean that in a very positive way. It's a sound signature that I think will play well with a lot of head fires and with consumers at large. If you are looking for a headphone with a sound signature perceived as perfectly flat and neutral, though, the MoFi may not be your cup of tea. Its bass is north of neutral, it's a rich full bass with good detail, but thankfully I don't find it overblown. To be clear though, the MoFi is not a bass head headphone in my opinion. Ah, oh by the way, speaking of bass, I should mention here that MoFi's built-in amp has a mode called On Plus that boosts the MoFi's bass around 4.5 decibels centered at 60 hertz. The Q setting at that boost point is quite wide, which is nice. It makes for a nicely integrated and smooth onset and roll off of the boost. MoFi's On Plus mode gives very well engineered bass emphasis, so I use it actually quite a bit when I think a recording can benefit from a little extra energy down low. The MoFi's mid-range is also rich and detailed, and I find it serves any kind of music well, and I listen to just about every genre of music, and I think I've run just about every genre of music through the MoFi. I'm really enjoying its mid-range performance. Its treble also has good extension, not the soaring super extension of something like a Hi-Fi Man HE560, a far more expensive example, by the way, but still with good treble extension in my ears and good detail. Now, I am sensitive to sibilance, and to my ears, the MoFi thankfully doesn't overcook the treble with any excess in that area. That is a big deal to me. In short, again, I think the Blue MoFi team did an excellent job meeting the goal of crafting a headphone that's flat enough for professional use, but not clinical. And the On Plus mode also gives it some nice added versatility. Now I should also mention, I can't believe I haven't mentioned it already, that the MoFi is a closed headphone. Quite closed actually. That dark stuff you see around there is the rubber boot we talked about. That's not venting. This is a closed design. It's good at keeping sound in and it's good at keeping sound from outside out. So if you're looking for a good isolating closed headphone, definitely put it on your list. And those memory foam ear pads do a real nice job of sealing around your ears. Now, in terms of soundstage for a closed headphone, the MoFi is good. It's not the most expansive soundstage I've heard from a closed headphone, but it's good, big enough, and it's coherent, which is very important to me. The instruments sound like they're coming from where they should come from in the mix and voices. I actually used it to listen to recordings uh, where I was actually present for the recordings, and it does a very nice job of reproducing the space. So, in terms of soundstage, it's good for a closed headphone. As for my criticisms of the MoFi, thankfully I don't have many nits to pick, but there are a couple things I should point out. First of all, this is not a light headphone at 466 grams or around 16 ounces. It's not a super heavyweight either, it's just not a lightweight. Now thankfully I find the MoFi comfortable, so it does a nice job of distributing its weight on my head and over my ears. I also want to mention that it is not a small headphone. This is the MoFi in its most compact position inside its included carrying bag. Now it's pretty big in this mode, you can see, and that's as small as it gets. So if lightweight and compact size are important to you, you may find the MoFi a bit too beefy. It's certainly no ultra portable like Vmoda's XS, so keep that in mind. One last criticism I have is regarding the portable cable that comes with the MoFi. I like that it comes with two cables, a 3 meter cable with no inline remote and a shorter 1 meter cable for on the go use that has an inline 3 button remote. However, this remote on the short cable is placed so high up the cable that you can't see it while you're wearing the headphones. Maybe if you were Jar Jar Binks and your eyes were at the end of stalks or something you could see it, but I can't see it. Now this wouldn't be much of a bother if it was easy to distinguish the remote's buttons, like by placing a bump on the center button for example. But the MoFi remote's three buttons all feel exactly the same to my fingertips, and I find myself fumbling with it clumsily most of the time. Again, just putting a bump on this center button would help a lot. Now, these are only very minor annoyances for me, thankfully, and are really all I've got right now as far as pot shots at the MoFi go. I think it's very obvious by now that I'm rather excited about this new headphone, this MoFi from Blue Microphones. We talked about that exclusive club of premium headphone, premium microphone manufacturers at the beginning of the video. And man, has Blue Microphones entered that club with style and pizzazz with the MoFi. I mean, this thing is pretty cool. And uh, I think, in my opinion, it's about as guaranteed a hit of a headphone as I've seen in a long time. Um, I think it's going to have a lot of appeal with head fires for the performance, um, for the style. 
but that stuff will also carry over well into the consumer market because it's still attainable at only $350. Now that's still an expensive headphone in the consumer segment, but attainable. So I think this is, again, about as guaranteed a hit of a headphone as I've seen in a long time. Well, anyways, I'm going to do what I've enjoyed doing most, uh, well, other than this, <laughs> since the blue MoFi arrived, and that's listening to it. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.